And good day, my listeners. We're at chapter 17, verse 11 of the book of Second Chronicles. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver, and the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,700 rams, and 7,700 he goats. Notes. Well, even though this involves Philistines, this is actually something good right here. Instead of Satan taking what we have, we're taking what he has, and this is the way that it should be. Now, Satan is nothing more than a good-for-nothing, low-life punk. Verse 12. And Jehoshaphat waxed great exceedingly, but he built in, and he built in Judah castles and cities of store. And he had much business and substance in the cities of Judah. And the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. And these are the numbers of them according to the house of their fathers. Of Judah the captains of thousands, Adna the chief, and with him mighty men of valor, three hundred thousand. And next to him was Jehohanan the captain, and with him two hundred and fourscore thousand. And next to him was Amasiah, the son of uh, Zikri, who willingly offered himself unto the Lord, and with him two hundred thousand mighty men of valor. And of Benjamin, Iliada, a mighty man of valor, and with him armed men with bow and shield two hundred thousand. And next to him was Jehazabad, and with him an hundred and fourscore thousand ready prepared for the war. These waited on the king, beside those whom the king put in the fenced cities throughout all Judah. Notes. Jehoshaphat's blessings are very similar to King David, because uh, Jehoshaphat is very similar to King David. Chapter 18. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance, and joined affinity with Ahab. Oh boy. Notes. Well, oftentimes, riches and honor can be as dangerous to the spiritual life than contempt and poverty. It is much better for the preacher if most are cursing him instead of praising him. And probably the greatest danger to the church is joining affinity with the world. This leaven that Satan introduced into Judah would ultimately drench Jerusalem in much, much n uh, needless bloodshed. Verse 2. And after certain years he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance, and for the people who he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Notes. Well, we have the believer going down to the world, and he is received with great hospitality, but immediately he is made a very, very large tool for the world to play around with. Verse 3. I'll oh, get a little machine going by here. Hold on. <laughs> Verse 3. That's a street sweeper, by the way, and he just went by. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as you are, and my people are as your people, and we will be with you in the war. Notes. Jehoshaphat answered falsely. He, in fact, was led by God, while Ahab was led by Satan. The people of Judah were worshippers of the true God, with the people of Israel worshipping Baal. In fact, there was no similarity between the two. The Lord was grossly displeased with Jehoshaphat making affinity with Ahab. And it's going to result in a lot of bad things. Verse 4, hopefully we won't have that street sweeper come by here anymore. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray you, at the word of the Lord today. Notes. Well, why didn't he do that earlier? If Jehoshaphat had inquired of the Lord previously, he would not even be here with Ahab in the first place. Verse 5. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together the prophets of the prophets four hundred men. And they were false prophets, by the way. And he said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, 
for God will deliver it into the king's hand. Notes. Now this right here really, really ticks me off. The modern church abounds with these kinds of so-called prophets. They prophesy continually, but they prophesy out of their own minds because precious few are actually from the Lord. And boy, there is very few things that get under my skin than a bunch of people who hear from God constantly. That right there should be a very big red light for you people who are listening to my voice. Everybody knows what God wants, so why aren't they reading the word of God? Verse 6. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Notes. Well, at least Jehoshaphat knew that their prophecies did not ring true. Unfortunately, far too many of modern Christendom do not know the false from the true. They're whispering a whole bunch of sweet nothings into your ear and blowing smoke and telling you things like, Give me money and I will pray for you and God will give you this and that certain amount in return by this and that certain time and all these other things. God does it in his own time, so why are they trying to say what God does? Okay, verse 7. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he always, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. In other words, don't say this. Notes. Well, what's really, really sad here is that the ratio of 400 to 1 would probably be very, very true right now. It seems to me like there's a prophet in every single church, but precious few are actually from the Lord. The few who are from the Lord are hated, and of this is to be very, very certain. If you don't believe me, just read the books of the prophets and all the trash they had to go through because they simply would not back down to worldly pressures. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lament, uh, not Lamentations, but Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. There's quite a few of those prophets right there that went through all kinds of trouble simply because they would not back down and they kept on preaching the word of God despite what happened. Oh... And Jesus berated the Pharisees because of their treatment of prophets. Anyways, we'll cover that later. Verse 8. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah the son of Imla. Verse 9. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place in, at the entering in of the gate of Samaria, and all the false prophets prophesied before them. Notes. Now, you may have noticed I entered the word false in front of the word prophet, but that's the 400 knuckleheads that are blowing smoke. If it is to be noticed, they were prophesying prosperity, exactly as it is right now. There's prosperity, there's money, there's good things that are going on for the people of God. Oh, give me a break. All hell is breaking loose in this nation. There's no real prosperity whenever God leaves, and that's exactly what's happened. We've kicked God out, and we've uh, brought in all this other garbage, humanistic psychology and whatnot. That is exactly what is going on right now, and it makes my stomach turn. Verse 10. And Zedekiah the son of Kaniah had made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these you shall push Syria until they be consumed. Notes. While these false prophets right here were just as quick to cry, Thus saith the Lord, but the truth was, what they were saying was not from God at all. Verse 11. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And we must pick up in chapter 18, verse 12. Thank you, and God bless. I'll see you later.